We saw earlier that it's made up of eight small bones. Now these eight bones are arranged in two rows of four bones each. A proximal row of four and a distal row of four. So we're going to name these bones. So in the proximal row, starting from the radial side and are working our way to the ulnar side, we have the scaphoid, so-called because it resembles a boat, and scaphoid is boat-like in Greek. And then immediately on the ulnar side of the scaphoid is a sort of curved crescentic bone, hence lunate, moon-like or half-moon-like. And then on the ulnar side of the lunate is a bone called the triquetral, and then in front of the triquetral is a small P-shaped bone, hence pisiform. So these are the four that make up the proximal row of the carpus. And then the distal row of the carpus, starting from the radial side again and working our way towards the ulnar side, is made up of the trapezium, which in fact articulates with the base of the metacarpal of the thumb. And then on the ulnar side of the trapezium is a small bone wedged here, and that's called the trapezoid. And then immediately on the ulnar side of the trapezoid is the largest of the carpal bones, and usually the first one to appear developmentally, and that's called the capitate. And on the ulnar side of the capitate is the hamate, so which is the most ulnar of the bones in the distal row. And notice the hamate has this very prominent hook-like projection on its ventral surface. That is the hook of the hamate, an important landmark. Your anatomy matters.